Hey friends, so a recurring thing that some people seem to be dealing with is that they have some vague sense of what they want and they don't know how to translate that into what they're going to be doing day to day, right? And I remember when I was about 22, the thing that I, I thought I was most excited about was space travel. You know, I felt that it is something that would expand human consciousness for the entire species. If you're not familiar, check out the overview effect on YouTube. Just look up the overview effect. It's what happens when astronauts go to space and they get to perceive all of Earth, you know, within eyesight. And it just makes that blows their minds re regarding how we are all connected. We're all on the same planet. It's one thing to know it intellectually. It's one thing to see with your eyes, the entire species, the entire planet. And that, was something that kept me going. I think when I was about 20, 20, when I was about 22, 23, I felt like I was burdened by my bills and my job and my mortgage and just commuting to work every day. Everything just felt so drudgery. Felt like, felt like such drudgery. It just felt like I was, I was you know, grinding unpleasantly, unhappily. And you know what it's all for, right? And I, I had this grand thing, which is to think about uh, space travel, right? And that that would make things better for everyone, better for me. You know, it's, it's just it would be a world that I want to live in. But the thing is, at a, at twenty two, what the hell am I gonna do to make space travel happen? Right? Like commercial space travel. How am I gonna make it? I can I can just talk about it with my friends, but that doesn't do a whole lot to advance that that move that needle. I'm not moving the needle very much at all, but basically negligible, right? And and that's unfulfilling. It's not nice. And, but you know, it, it kind of functions as like this, this fantasy for what, it, it's an escapist sort of fantasy. Like, oh, one day maybe I will someday work on space travel or helping space travel. And I think the thing to do is to kind of plot out the path. So, and I mean, so there's, there's two things you can do here. One is try and plot out what the path would be for someone like me to eventually actually work on helping with space travel. And one thing, one way to do that is to try, so there's the engineering path, right? Like maybe I can try and work on the technical problems, but I don't even really think the technical problems are actually the bottleneck. Well, that's my point of view based on my frame of reference. From my frame of reference, I feel that the bottleneck is cultural. And I think that, and obviously my frame of reference is my frame of view my perspective is informed by my frame of reference. My perspective is informed by what I care about, what I see, what I, what I can perceive. And, you know, so for me, I, that's still actually kind of, you know, part of my basket of goals and interests, which is that one way to shift the culture in terms of thinking about expanding human consciousness by space travel is to build an audience and talk to lots and lots of people and bring it up from time to time. And I have done that. So, you know, my Twitter, I've grown my Twitter audience from like a couple of hundred people to now like almost 40,000 people. And I can, you know, I can bring it up in, in podcasts, YouTube channel, on my YouTube channel, I can talk about it. And so I get this idea across to more and more people. But so that's all of that is one path, right? And there was a fork in that path between engineering and, and uh, marketing, and I, I chose marketing. But, you know, even then, I don't know if it's necessary to be fixated on space travel as a particular outcome, right? You can be overly outcome fixated. You can be overly thinking, uh, I really want to go to this bar because I want to have a good night out with my friends. And then you go to the bar and there's a long line and it's like raining or something. And then you're just really desperate to get into that bar and you can't do it. And you end up wasting the whole night trying to get into the bar and you don't. And it turns out there's, a, there's another bar next door and the bar is not that great, but it's all right. You know, it would have been vastly preferable to waiting in the line outside the first door, waiting in line outside the first bar, right? And if you remember, your original plan was to have a good night out with your friends. And so you end, you're so fixated on the outcome that you think you want that when it no longer becomes feasible, you struggle to adapt and switch to the next outcome, which would be, you know, the second best outcome would have been still pretty good. But instead, in trying to push against the pool door and like banging your head against the wall, you end up with not the second best outcome, not the third best outcome, but like a much, much, much worse outcome, which is tragic. Anyway, 
So yeah, the the other thing to do, I think, is to investigate what is it that you really want. You know, you so you have this outcome, this 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 vague vision of oh, when there's space travel, there'll be like something in the distant future. But like, what is that I really want? I want to see the world become a better place. What well, what does the world mean? No, you know, nobody actually interfaces directly with the entire world, right? The world is eight billion people. The the we we our experience of the world is intermediated by the people around us, by the media we consume, by all, all of those things, and you know it's worth asking when I say I want the world to be a better place. Maybe what I mean in the in the intermediate sense is that I want my world to be a better place. I want the world around me to be a better place. I want to feel happier. I want to feel like. You know my life has meaning. I wanna feel like I'm surrounded by people who are learning and growing and kind and you know compassionate, and that doesn't. There are things that I can do today and this year that will move the needle on that. That is not the same as making space travel happen, but it does improve my immediate circumstances and it also puts me in a slightly better position to work on the bigger goals subsequently down the line. So it's a more strategic path, you know? And so the, the question is, you, you have some kind of grand goal, you know? And so, if, let, let, so maybe even space travel is quite specific. Like maybe you just have a very, very vague goal. Like, uh, I want to be happy. I just want to be happy. Right? That's, just, that's a very super vague. And then you have to ask yourself, okay, when have I been happy before? You know, what were the happiest moments in my life? Make a list. You know, were you happy when you were traveling? Were you happy when you were with your family? Were you happy when you were making stuff? Were you happy, you know, you list, list out all the things. Literally write them down. Ask yourself, which of these things made me the most happy? Why? Which of these things gave me pleasure? Which of these things gave me flow? Which of these things gave me purpose? Right? Like literally journal and figure out who the fuck you are. <laughs> you know, figure out what what makes you tick, what makes you happy. Like y- you are a, a puzzle that you can, you know, it's, it's, it's an infinite puzzle, so you can't solve it completely, but you can get more familiar with it. You can get more acquainted with yourself. Do you realize this? A lot of people don't, you know, you, you are in life, you are both the detective and the crime scene, right? And you can be in the process of figuring it out and you will die not having figured it out completely but you can make a lot of progress and you can be much more in tune with it. You know, you can surf the chaos of your own waves of your own ocean in your mind, in your body, right? And again, that doesn't mean that you're never going to fall, but you can get better at it, right? So you want to be happy, space travel, what else? So right now, I'm I'm no longer kind of hyper fixated on space travel, although I do still have this dream of how can I devote my life to expanding human consciousness? And wh- okay, why? So that's so that's so vague and abstract, right? So I try and come up. Why do I want human consciousness to be expanded? And when I dig into it, I realize it's because when I was a child, I felt lonely and isolated because it felt like the people around me had diminished consciousness. And when I say diminished consciousness, I don't mean in a dismissive or cruel way. I mean, you know, I had to go to school and school is a shitty place where you don't learn shit. You know, it's not about learning at all. And they don't, people are not curious. People don't want to ask questions. They just want you to sit for tests and pass tests. And I'm like, okay, uh, you know, wouldn't it be nice if education actually cared about learning, right? And that's an expanded consciousness thing. So, I mean, and yeah, so now do I want to focus on education and become an educator? Kind of, but not exactly. I'm not fixated on the role of being an educator. I'm, I'm curious to, to see education happen. I'm not, I'm not fixated on the form. I think fixating on the form of the classroom and you know, a lot of online courses, they're just replicating the classroom online, just not ideal right you want you want to get all the way to the fundamental building blocks right elon calls this thinking from first principles like what the fuck is learning what the fuck is education you know like you don't need a class you don't need to start with a classroom you don't need to start with a test you don't need to start with a teacher you need to start with learning questions and answers like how do you anyway <laughs> um so that's a, there's a point is you figure out what you want you figure out how how were you like you know, wounded as a child in some way. And every, everyone gets screwed over in some way, right? Nobody makes it to adulthood completely intact, never disappointed, never betrayed, never heartbroken, never, you know, fucked with. Like, even if even if your family is great, like, something will disappoint you somewhere. You know, somewhere you, you are, you're born into a sanitized bubble reality 
right? You know, even before you're born, when you're in the womb, the womb is a sanitized bubble of reality. And then you're born and everyone's fucking crying when they're born because reality is horrific compared to the womb, right? And then childhood is a womb compared to adulthood. And adulthood, it just, it's a fractal all the way up. And there is stress and pain and fear as you cross each threshold. And, you know, the thing that we want that will heal us is the thing that, we wish we had, but we did not in retrospect, right? And so when you figure out what are the things that you can do for the world around you that you wish someone had done for you when you were younger, you will experience healing, you will experience growth, you will, you know, and I, I've, I've found in my experience, like, so I want to help other people. And when I help other people, they express gratitude. You know, they want to buy my book. They want to follow me on Twitter. They want to help me out back. And this, and it's, it's not about the money. It's not about status. It's about kinship and well you can say some you can say it's all the same thing sure whatever but like it's it's about kind of growing right and and giving to the world and getting back and participating in that symbiosis right i think ellen watt said some stuff about how people isolate themselves and they they, they carve up reality into like pieces and then they feel orphaned in the world but you are off the world you are the world we are all part we are all waves in the ocean right and people feel like they're isolated waves separate from the ocean and then there's just anxiety and neurosis and you want to feel like you're a part of what's going on and that you are valued and that you're loved and that you are enough you're adequate and you are you know but you can and, and if you don't feel like it you can feel more like it by participating in symbiosis in some way how, however that plays out for you and so yeah i don't know if, if that doesn't quite answer the question i originally set out to answer which was how do you make vague goals be precise but i, I guess the thing i'll say is navigate by excitement navigate by feeling and get shit done do small little projects where things get accomplished that you can share with other people that you can talk about and and that kind of systematically turns your life from like this vague nebulous nonsense to stuff you've done people you've talked to you know relationships that you have done